Hi friends, I am Professor Kshitij Bansal. I teach international law at Chintal Global Law School. We are going to discuss a very unique and a very interesting legal regime provided for under international law for the protection of farmers' rights by way of this treaty called the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. The access and benefit sharing envisaged under the International Treaty for Plant Genetic Resources in Food and Agriculture is entirely different from what it is under CBD. One of the main objectives of CBD is to conserve and preserve plant genetic resources. But the main objectives of International Treaty for Plant Genetic Resources are the conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture and the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of their use in harmony with the Convention on Biodiversity which we would refer to as CBD for sustainable agriculture and food security. So conserving the plant genetic resources in food and agriculture for further research and plant breeding is of paramount importance. However, there is an attempt at least to recognize some rights of the farmers in this treaty. This treaty defines farmers' rights as Article 9.1 The contracting parties recognize the enormous contribution that the local and indigenous communities and farmers of all regions of the world, particularly those in the centers of origin, and crop diversity have made and will continue to make for the conservation and development of plant genetic resources which constitute the basis of food and agricultural production throughout the world. The contracting parties agree that the responsibility for realizing farmers' rights as they relate to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture it rests with national governments. In accordance with their needs and priorities, each contracting party should, as appropriate and subject to its national legislation, take measures to protect and promote farmers' rights, including protection of traditional knowledge relevant to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, protection of the right to equitably participating in sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of such plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, and protection of the right to participate in making decisions at the national level on matters related to conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. Further, this provision says that nothing in this article shall be interpreted to limit any rights that farmers have to save, use, exchange, sell, farm saved seed, propagating material, subject to national law and as appropriate. The definition I just narrated makes it clear that farmers' rights is related only to the conservation and preservation of plant genetic resources. They are protection of traditional rights, traditional knowledge, equitable sharing of benefit, participation in decision making. All these are obviously group rights. Traditional knowledge is held by a group of people and it is transferred from generation to generation. Quite obviously, it is not possible at all to identify a particular person who holds this traditional knowledge. So the protection of traditional knowledge relating to plant genetic resource is a group right. Let's now understand benefit sharing under this international treaty for the protection of plant genetic resource. Regarding the right to save, use, exchange and sell the farm saved seed or the propagating material, the treaty is not clear as to whether these rights are recognized. While on the one hand the treaty says 
affirming also the rights recognized in this treaty to save, use, exchange and sell farm saved seed and other propagating material. The treaty in the context of recognizing farmers' rights says only that nothing in this article shall be interpreted to limit any rights that farmers have to save, use, exchange and sell farm saved seed propagating material subject to national law and as appropriate. This means that though the preamble seems to recognize farmers' rights in this regard, this right when comes to the body part is subject to national law and there are no limitations imposed on it. We would now understand the multilateral system. Under the Convention on Biodiversity, CBD which we call, the system of benefit sharing was bilateral and it was a dealing between the person or persons who seek access to the plant genetic resource and the state directly. So the state was required to ask the prior informed consent from the farmers in the case of plant genetic resource of food and agriculture and to make arrangements for the equitable benefit sharing for them. But under the international treaty for plant genetic resources in food and agriculture, the system is multilateral. Now the question of access under this multilateral system. The multilateral system covers the plant genetic resources for food and agriculture listed in Annex 1 to the treaty, established according to criteria of food security and interdependence. The multilateral system includes all plant genetic resources for food and agriculture listed in Annex 1 that are under the management and control of the contracting parties and in the public domain. With a view to achieving the fullest possible coverage of the multilateral system, the contracting parties have to invite all other holders of the plant genetic resources for food and agriculture listed in Annex 1 to include these plant genetic resources for food and agriculture in the multilateral system. The access and benefit sharing is determined in the following terms. Access shall be provided solely for the purposes of utilization and conservation for research, breeding and training of food and agriculture provided that such purpose does not include chemical, pharmaceutical and or other non-food feed industrial uses. In the case of multiple use crops, food and non-food, their importance for food security should be determined for their inclusion in the multilateral system and availability for facilitated access. Second point, access shall be accorded expeditiously without the need to track individual accessions and free of charge or when a state is charged uh, a fee it shall not exceed the minimal cost involved. Third point, all available passport data and subject to applicable law any other associated available non-confidential descriptive information shall be made available with the plant genetic resource for food and agriculture provided. Fourth point, recipients shall not claim any intellectual property or other rights that limit the facilitated access to the plant genetic resources for food and agriculture or their genetic parts or com components in the form received from the multilateral system. Fifth, access to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture under development including material being developed by farmers shall be at the discretion of its developer during the period of its development. Next, access to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture protected by intellectual and other property rights shall be consistent with relevant international agreements 
and with the relevant national laws. After this, the next point talks about plant genetic resources for food and agriculture accessed under the multilateral system and conserved shall continue to be made available to the multilateral system by the recipients of those plant genetic resources for food and agriculture under the terms of this treaty and last without prejudice to the other provisions under this article the contracting parties agree that access to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture found in in situ conditions will be provided protection according to national legislation or in the absence of such legislation in accordance with such standards as may be set by the government body. This is Article 12, Clause 3 of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. What is the benefit sharing regime under the multilateral system? It is interesting to note that the contracting parties recognize the facilitated access to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture which are included under the multilateral system constitute itself a major benefit of the multilateral system. This is thus not a direct payment to the persons who contribute to the plant genetic resource. Unlike under the CBD, it is not a dealing between the state and those who access the plant genetic resource. Access is given to all plant genetic resources listed in Annexure 1 and benefit is given in some other way. Only sometimes in the form of money. This means that the farmer who conserved and preserved a particular plant genetic resource may not be directly benefited by giving access. The benefits arising from the use, including commercial, of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture under the multilateral system has to be shared fairly and equitably through the mechanisms of exchange of information, access to and transfer of technology, capacity building and the sharing of benefits arising from commercialization. Taking into account the priority activity areas in the rolling global plan of action under the guidance of the governing body. Exchange of information is a very significant aspect in this whole protection regime. The contracting parties have to make available information like catalogues and inventories, information on technologies, results of technical, scientific and socio-economic research, including characterization, evaluation and utilization regarding those plant genetic resources for food and agriculture under the multilateral system. Such an information has to be made available where non-confidential, subject to applicable law and in accordance with the national capabilities. Such information has to be made available to all contracting parties to this treaty through the information system. Access to and transfer of technology would be next intuitive question in your mind now. The contracting parties have to provide and facilitate access to technologies for the conservation, characterization, evaluation and the use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture which are under the multilateral system recognizing that some technologies can only be transferred through genetic materials the contracting parties shall provide and or facilities facilitate access to such technologies and genetic material which are under the multilateral system and to improved varieties and genetic material developed through the use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture under the multilateral system in conformity with the provisions of Article 12 of this treaty. Access to these technologies, improved varieties and genetic material shall be provided 
and or facilitated while respecting applicable property rights and access laws and in accordance with national capabilities. Access to and transfer of technology to countries, especially to developing countries and the countries with economies in transition, shall be carried out through a set of measures such as the establishment and maintenance of and participation in crop-based thematic groups on utilization of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. All types of partnership in research and development and in commercial joint ventures relating to the material received, human resource development and effective access to research facilities. Thirdly, access to and transfer of technology as referred to in points 1 and 2 narrated by me, including that protected by intellectual property rights to developing countries that are contracting parties, in particular least developed countries and countries with economies in transition, shall be provided and or facilitated under fair and most favorable terms in particular, the, in the case of technologies for use in conservation, the multilateral system of access and benefit sharing, as well as technologies for the benefit of farmers in developing and least developed countries, with a special focus on least developed countries, and countries with economies in transition, including on concessional and preferential terms, were mutually agreed, among other things, through partnerships in research and development under the multilateral system. Such access and transfer shall be provided on terms which recognize and are consistent with the adequate and effective protection of intellectual property rights. Capacity building is always an important part in such international frameworks. Contracting parties have to give priority to establishing and or strengthening programs for scientific and technical education and training in conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. Secondly, developing and strengthening facilities for conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, in particular in developing countries and countries with economies in transition. And thirdly, carrying out scientific research, preferably and where possible, in developing countries and countries with economies in transition, in cooperation with institutions of such countries and developing capacity for such research in fields where they are needed sharing of monetary and other benefits of commercialization is another interesting aspect after we've talked of access to benefit sharing and capacity building this treaty says as follows that the contracting parties agree under the multilateral system to take measures in order to achieve commercial benefit sharing through the involvement of the private and public sectors in activities identified under this article through partnerships and collaboration, including with the private sector in developing countries and countries with economies in transition, in research and technology, development. The contracting parties agree that the standard material transfer agreement referred to in Article 12.4 shall include a requirement that a recipient who commercializes a product that is a plant genetic resource for food and agriculture and that incorporates material accessed from the multilateral system shall pay to the mechanism referred to in article 19.3 an equitable share of the benefits arising from the commercialization of that product except whenever 
such a product is available without restriction to others for further research and reading, in which case the recipient who commercializes shall be encouraged to make payment. The governing body shall, at its first meeting, determine the level, form and manner of the payment in line with commercial practice. The governing body may decide to establish different levels of payments for various categories of recipients who commercialize such products. It may also decide on the need to exempt from such payments small farmers in developing countries and in countries with economies in transition. The governing body may, from time to time, review the levels of payment with a view to achieving fair and equitable sharing of benefits, which is not boxed and cemented in a frame of time and it's kept dynamic. And it may also assess within a period of five years from the entry into force of the treaty whether the mandatory payment requirement in the multilateral system shall apply in cases where such commercialized product are available without restriction to others for further research and reading. The contracting parties agree that the benefits arising from the use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture that are shared under the multilateral system should flow primarily, directly and indirectly to farmers in all countries, especially developing countries, least developed countries and countries with economies in transition, who conserve and sustainably utilize plant genetic resource for food and agriculture. It would be meaningful to state in the conclusion that under this system, countries are in a position to access all the plant genetic resource on food and agriculture included in this system as per the rules of international treaty of plant genetic resource in food and agriculture. The treaty's truly innovative solution to access and benefit sharing is its declaration that our most important crops, 64 of them, crops that together account for 80% of all human consumption are included. On ratifying the treaty, countries agree to make their genetic diversity and related information about the crops stored in their gene banks available to all through the multilateral system. This gives scientific institutions and private sector plant breeders an opportunity to work with and potentially to facilitate research, innovation and exchange of further information without restrictions with the relevant stakeholders. This cuts down on the cost and time needed for breeders to negotiate contracts with individual gene banks. The multilateral system sets up opportunities for developed countries with technical know-how and deep pockets to use their financial sector and laboratories to build on what the farmers in developing, least developed and transitioning economies have accomplished in their fields. Before I take your leave, I must make a mention, as a pursuance and as a follow-up to this treaty, India brought in a domestic legislation in the name of Plant Farmers' Rights and Plant Varieties uh, Protection Act, which is a very, very progressive and landmark legislation and creates a sui generis protection regime. This assumes significant importance in Indian context because we have a huge wealth of traditional knowledge and farmers' knowledge. For example, the 2,000 varieties of rice we take pride in in India are not varieties which have been developed in laboratories of India, but they are the varieties which our farmers have developed. This is plant genetic resource and this is what is traditional knowledge that is intended to be protected under this international legal regime supported by the respective national legislations. I hope this has made you curious enough to know more about this. Thank you so much for listening.